WWE has introduced a new policy following the Vince McMahon allegations. Elsewhere, is an AEW star about to leave for WWE? And finally, we have a backstage update on CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, and Seth Rollins and their lovely promo on Raw. More on that in this video. Hello everybody, Jack and Andrew back again with a second dose of wrestling news on a Wednesday. He's got it. Absolutely. Uh, now, as reported by Post Wrestling and WrestleNomics, WWE established a new company policy on intimate or romantic relationships in the workplace in the wake of those Vince McMahon allegations. Now, apparently, this policy was initially introduced in 2023, but has only come to light externally this week. Uh, Post and WrestleNomics obtained the policy, and Andrew's going to read it out now. Yes, uh, to promote a productive environment free from conflicts as well as favoritism and unfair advantage, whether perceived or real, WWE has implemented the following policy and guidelines related to consensual relationships in the workplace. This policy applies to all employees regardless of rank or title. All employees should recognize the possible negative consequences of romantic, intimate or sexual relationships in the workplace. Consensual relationships can compromise the integrity of supervisory responsibility, create the potential for abuse of authority or cause problems due to perceptions of favoritism by others. Yeah, the document itself has also set out other safeguarding rules regarding relationships in the workplace. Uh, if an em it says, if an employee is entering or in a consensual relationship with another employee, both employees must report the relationship to HR and uh, cooperate in actions taken to address any conflict of interest. It goes on to say, it may be necessary for the executive or manager to assist HR in assessing and addressing any conflict. Addressing conflicts, uh, conflicts may include transferring one of the individuals to another position or transferring supervisory decision-making evaluative or advisory responsibilities or providing an additional layer of oversight to the supervisory role. Uh, it also talked about some of the top executives as well. Yes, it did, uh, saying WWE strongly discourages consensual relationships involving any WWE board member or executive team member, such as the CEO, president, CFO, chief content officer, chief legal officer, or chief human resources officer. An employee shall not uh, exercise responsibility, instructional, evaluative, or supervisory for any affiliated individual with whom the employee has or had a consensual relationship. Violation of this policy may result in disciplinary, disciplinary, disciplinary yeah. action. We'll get there eventually, up to and including termination. So basically, this is this is probably like a similar sort of thing that you'd find in <clears throat> most companies. I yeah, suppose. of course. Um, and it just seems to obviously the timing of it is clearly in response to the Vince McMahon allegations and Absolutely. all that sort of stuff and WWE looking to I'd like to think it's not just so they look better to the outside world but to also promote a healthier workplace environment Agreed, as well. yeah I for sure so anyway, I mean it feels like it's been needed and it has been needed I think within yeah, yeah. the company for the longest time too and you know uh, Ari Emanuel did say that he was looking to sort out the culture within WWE as well following the merger um, so at least some steps are being made yes hopefully so Brian Thurston of WrestleNomics and John Pollock of Post Wrestling shared this new document to Dr. Lisa Maniero, professor of management at Fairfield University in Connecticut, who said, this is an okay policy, better than most, but still inadequate. However, WWE did not address the issue of hierarchical relationships where one person is subordinate to the other, uh, which are certainly a conflict of interest. I think that um, some of those guidelines there may have sort of vaguely covered hierarchical, like as in mm. these these bullet points that we talked about transferring one of them to a different position or transferring. Yes. Um, and it doesn't sound ideal or specific enough to deal with certain situations, but the, yeah. I guess it has vaguely maybe, I, I get what you're saying though. It, it seems to kind of just kind of, it's kind of a coverall. I yeah, suppose. of course. Well, that was, uh, they also showed it to Professor Michael Z. Green, uh, director of the workplace law program at Texas A and M University School of Law. And sort of what Jack said there, he said, in my opinion, this language does not go far enough. It should say that if any such officer seeks to engage in a consensual relationship with a subordinate or does engage in a purported consensual relationship with a subordinate, the WWE can consider such action as bad judgment warranting cause uh, cause for immediate termination from the executive position the person holds. That is a good point there. <clears throat> I mean, he, both of those quotes are from very intelligent people. Yeah, but, no, well, yeah, that's actually, of course. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but um, I think that it, they, they also raise a good point. The, the language of it also seems to be like aimed at, I know this is just because we're reading it from an outside point of view, but it seems to be like, you naughty employees, don't try anything naughty. Yes, yeah. When really, it's... Yeah. Yeah. The, the things that have happened have come from the higher, yeah, of the higher places.
centers of power. Um, so yeah, so something like that definitely, I feel like needs to be um, implemented. And uh, you know, it's a start at least, but hopefully it does get pushed a little bit further. And, yeah, you know. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, elsewhere, Mike Santana recently, or Santana as he was known in AW, he but was. often Mike Santana as well, uh, recently spoke to Chris Van Vliet uh, and talked very openly about his AW departure. He also intimated that there are others in AW looking to jump ship to WWE. Uh, when it came to the, the topic of Cody Rhodes leaving AW, he said he always knew it was coming before hinting that another current AW star would do the same thing. Yeah, he said, I'll be real. There were two people that I said off the bat were going to go back to WWE. One of them already did. Now, when Van Vliet asked to clarify that he meant another AEW star would go back to WWE, Santana agreed. Who do we think then? Jericho? Jericho. Do you think he means another big name who's already kind of a big name in WWE? Mm, that, that's the thing. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Um, <clears throat> Malachi Black. Yeah, yeah, that's maybe, a good show. Yeah. Perhaps. I'm not too sure. Miro. Miro, yeah. yeah. Could mm. be, I mean, it could be many people. And it could be, be many fair. people because there's many people. Yeah, Sting. Uh, Tony Khan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, uh, the, 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 there's obviously, you know, the AEW roster is very, very stacked. There's a lot of people in mm. there and some of them are certainly being underutilized and perhaps would feel like they would be better used elsewhere at least. Anyway. Yes, absolutely. Uh, speaking of AW stars, Mercedes Monet was the topic of a Becky Lynch comment recently. Becky was doing promotional work for her new book this week and spoke to the Orlando Sentinel as part of the PR tour. She was asked about Mercedes Monet and how her new AW deal makes her the highest paid woman in all of wrestling. Mm. And Becky had this to say. She did. She said, I think that that's an important part, getting paid equally for the equal work and the equal position we are at right now. Uh, women's evolutions and revolutions are fine and well, but making sure that they equate to contracts and financial reward for these things when we are doing equal work is hugely important. No, I mean, fair play. Yeah, fair yeah. play indeed. Fair play. Yeah, fair, fair yeah. play. Fair play. Uh, yeah, good comment there from Becky because yes. I suspect maybe that was a question, not necessarily, but you know those sneaky questions. Maybe they were like, maybe she'll give a jealous response mm. and say, that. or even in character like, well, I'm the man and I should be paid more. Yeah. But no, she just gave a very sensible and reasonable answer. And, right, and, and rightly so as well because that is a hot topic amongst people within wrestling as yeah, well yeah, that yeah. you know the women talent don't but perhaps get as paid as much as the men and i think it's it's the right thing to do yes they're doing just as much and also doing some really incredible stuff too yeah and when you're as big a star as sasha and as skilled yep then it doesn't matter if you're a woman or not exactly. yeah, yeah absolutely. exactly um Elsewhere, now on Raw, obviously, we, we, we talked on the previous news video briefly about the Cody Rhodes and The Rock segment. Yep. There was also another big talking point on Raw, and it was that three-way promo, or it eventually became a three-way promo, between CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, and Seth Rollins. It had, it was off the chain. It was off the chain. I feel like it broke them all a little bit in terms of uh, when Punk got down, did the count, when he's mm. like, oh, Seth was like, I don't know, but that's his, uh, that's his counting arm, and he gets down, counts with his left arm. Yeah, yeah. A fantastic count with the left arm. Oh, yeah. And it felt like uh, Seth and Andrew weren't expecting that. And yes. it was quite funny. Uh, there was also a bit of swearing. There was some uh, swearing. Some fourth wall breaks and references, in fact, to both Jim Cornette and Vince McMahon as mm. well. Uh, when CM Punk said to Drew, oh, yeah, you were the chosen one. Who chose who you chose again? You? And Drew was like, well, Paragon of good virtue chose you. Can't, I can't really say who that was. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, Gosh. Five or Select have shared some backstage details about the segment with reports saying the promo wasn't as heavily scripted as usual WWE segments are. I think you could tell that just by oh just absolutely by yeah uh, they the claim intentionally fightful say is that there was a general outline and they told the talent knew they were all going to just go and do it and see what happens and go for it go for it go for it uh, the promo was listed as one segment and was produced by Adam Pierce uh, as there was physicality between Rollins and McIntyre oh, so the the producer yes ago. yes, yes. Uh, we're told that WWE production wasn't anticipated CM Punk's line where he cursed and there was a memo sent to talent recently obviously that we've talked about on the news before that discouraged them from swearing on air. Uh, me and Ross were talking about this yesterday and uh, granted, you know, you don't need to always uh, harken on expletives to get a point across, but sometimes when it feels like we're very much blurring uh, blurring lines in terms of like actual heat and yeah, you know, heat yeah, within yeah. the ring and, and tension within, um, within feuds, yeah. it ramps it up a little bit. Yeah, if someone doesn't tip, if, you don't, if you're in a situation where there's typically swearing mm. and then there is a swear, you're like, oh, like especially like, within WWE as well. It's like if I heard Peter Austin from Triple Jump swear. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, oh, but but if it's Ashton, then I'm like, well, well I expect that. swears all the time. Yeah, yeah. She's a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, check out Triple Jump, our wonderful gaming assisted channel as well. Yeah, oh, sorry, well, what? Uh, also to add to this from Fightful Select, we I haven't finished everything here. Sorry, sorry, don't I'll wrap room. up yet. Sorry. We haven't heard of any issues. This comes from Fightful as well. We haven't heard of any issues backstage after the promo as it relates to heat or anything of that sort. And things have continued to appear well mm. with Punk in WWE, just in case, you know, lines maybe were blurred a little bit too much or the swearing got the, uh, got the, like, irks the higher ups or anything. Everything seemed I, smooth as butter. I think the fact that news outlets have been asking whether or not, you know, they've been digging around it with their sources to find out if there was any heat because of things that were said. Yes. I think that probably means it was a success. Agreed. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I think so, leading up to, you know, the biggest WrestleMania so the far that we've got. stage of them all. Oh, I'm excited. Jack. I'm excited as well. It's it's really creeping up on us. It's not this weekend, but next. Next weekend, oh, yeah. Oh my word. You can eat your Easter eggs first. And then you oh. can watch WrestleMania the weekend after. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy indeed. Uh, thank you all very much for watching this video. We have a previous news video out today already on this very channel. And do leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments section down below. Oh, I'll plug my Twitch stream. Actually. Go on, plug your Twitch stream. Me and Owen will be twitching tonight. Twitch.tv forward slash cultaholic at 6 p.m. UK time. Football manager, up the swan. Up the swan. Anything to plug, Andrew? Uh, yeah, on Sunday evening, me and Adam, I believe at 7 p.m. It will be BST at that point, right? Will it? Oh, and the clock's uh, UK. Time, UK, UK time. time, 7 p.m. UK time. Me and Adam will be playing through the whole WrestleMania 40 card on WWE 2K24, oh, so you can come and join us for that. Good Should be luck. Good. I hope you're Cody Rhodes. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. I'm ready to go. I've been practicing my triangle counters. Is that a big part of the game? Yes, that's oh. a big part. Best of luck, sir. Thank you, sir. And thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon.